There were some days when you really hated your job. Working at a bank wasn't really anyone's dream job, at least no one that you wanted to know. But working at one in such a busy city was especially heinous. You swore that every other day some two-bit villain trying to make a name for themselves found their way into your place of work, thinking that just because they had a moderately strong quirk that they could get away with robbing you blind. It was utterly routine for you at this point, and honestly you got more annoyed at the attempts now than afraid. A hero would always show up sooner or later, and you had survived so many of these encounters without a scratch on you that you saved your concern solely for your customers. But today… today things were different. Today you thought to yourself distantly. You should probably set aside some concern for yourself. This time it wasn't just some hack villain or overly ambitious criminal that stood before you. No, this time it was Deku. He looked just like the pictures and clips of him that you had caught on the news, immaculately dressed in a white button-down shirt, a black vest and tie decorating it black dress pants and a pair of obsessively clean dress shoes. Green hair was combed smooth with the appearance of something that was naturally more chaotic and a smattering of freckles made him look deceptively innocent. His eyes though were something that the news footage had failed to capture properly. They were bright green, possessing an unnatural luster to them. The feeling you got looking into them was that they were somehow crawling in your head devouring everything it found there as if your memories and secrets were prey. Really, you realised as Deku grinned at you, he just looked too eager. <laughs> well, he chuckled as if the two of you were sharing a private joke. It certainly seems like you know the drill. It was true. As soon as he had entered with his goons, you had told the customers to cooperate, getting the ones still in shock to sit down on the shining marble floor. You only nodded in response, though. Heart stuck in your throat, keeping any words you might have used firmly aside. Though, I should remind you, you even try to use your quirk, and I'll kill you before you can blink. I... I don't have a quirk, you stammered. At your confession, Deku's smile only grew, though now it seemed to take on a hue of genuine interest. You had caught his attention, and not just as a target. <laughs> that! Now that is perfect! <laughs> he exclaimed with dark joy. You know, I stopped believing in fate when I was a kid, but something like this makes you wonder. I mean, a cute little hostage like you turning out to be quirkless? Do you believe in soulmates by any chance? You just stared back at him blankly, unable to tell if he was serious or not. Ah, he cooed in a surprisingly soothing manner. Aren't you a shy one? It's okay, I used to be that way too. Staring at him, you wondered why he was being so talkative with you. Was he like this on all of his jobs? But your thoughts were interrupted when Deku suddenly slammed his hands on the counter that separated the two of you, nimbly lifting himself up and hopping over so that he stood right in front of you. You tried to back away, but before you could make much progress, Deku wrapped one arm around your waist, pulling you towards him. Once he secured you firmly against himself, so close that you could feel the rise and fall of his chest as he breathed, he leaned down towards your ear. You want to know why I stopped being like that though? It's because one day, I learned something. I learned that no one, 
is going to give you what you want. You have to take it, he whispered. And what is it that you want? To hurt people who've done nothing to you? You asked bitterly, startled into talking without really thinking. Cause that's all I see you doing. Deku let go of you at that, removing his arm but then placing his hand around your chin, tilting it upward so that you were forced to look right into his eyes. Humming absentmindedly while he scrutinized you with a slight smirk on his face, Deku was silent for a moment. That's not what I want, he muttered, a flash of something dark and burning peering into you from his eyes. Deku started to lean towards you again, and you noticed with alarm that he seemed to be aiming for your lips. Instinctually, without considering what the consequences might be, you pushed him away. Deku stumbled back, caught off guard by your sudden movement. Don't fucking touch me! You spat at him. With his head bowed, you couldn't see his eyes when you said that, but you could see the way his mouth twisted. That... that wasn't very nice. Deku said, his voice sounding oddly choked. I wasn't gonna hurt you, you know? Lifting up his head, you saw that his face had become somewhat flushed. And were those tears gathering in his eyes? He stepped towards you and, afraid of what he might do, you spoke again. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry! You cried. I shouldn't have done that! Once you apologized, Deku's entire demeanor changed again. The tears in his eyes disappeared quickly, and he broke out into such a genuinely bright smile that she felt blinded by the sudden shift. Ah, oh, aren't you sweet? It's alright, dear. I forgive you. He soothed you reaching out and gently stroking your cheek with his thumb. After a moment, though, one of his lackeys called out to him, shouting that they had finished loading all of the money. Soon after that, you heard the sound of approaching sirens. Ah, <sighs> right on time. Deku sighed, sounding sincerely disappointed. I'm afraid that I have to cut things short, darling. But don't worry, I'll see you soon. <laughs> and with that, he left, taking his goons and his new supply of cash with him. The rest of the day was fairly average for one that included a robbery. You got a desperately needed drink of water, checked on your co-workers, and gave your statement to the police. You told them everything Deku had said to you, but they didn't think much of it. Reassuring you that he had only been trying to give you an extra scare, the police told you that you were free to go home and that they'd be in contact soon. You left the bank, though you didn't go straight home. No, after the ordeal you just had, you decided that you had earned an early drink, and so stopped at a bar before taking the bus back to your apartment. By the time you staggered to your door, unlocking it with uncoordinated movements, the creepy way that Deku had singled you out was just a dim recollection at the back of your mind. At that point, it was far too easy to agree with the police that it had all meant nothing, and you could move on with your life. That is, until you saw the single crimson rose that had been left on your bed. <laughs>